Hi everyone, and welcome to this exciting webinar. We all love a good webinar, don't we? It's like going to the movies, but instead of tediously working yourself through some three-hour biopic about some Marvel superhero you don't really care about, today you'll instead be going home after one hour and you'll be knowing so much about biomaterials and plastics, you don't even know what to do with all this information. So Hollywood, take note, this is the way it actually should be done, Scandinavian style. So who am I, you're asking? Well, Kaspar Strömman, your beloved host. Some of you might actually remember me from last year when I did a similar hosting in Oslo. This year, everybody agreed it was probably safer if I didn't fly over, which was really weird because I was also told it has nothing to do with the corona, but there you go. Anyway, I hope you're all leaning back, enjoying that complimentary cup of joe you're probably being given, and enjoying what we have on hand because just listen to this. These are the topics we will be discussing today. Is wood the new plastic? What are the future trends and needs in renewable packaging? We will be hearing from companies who work towards building a more sustainable future for the packing in industry. Uh, we will even get to know what the industry needs. We'll be talking about greenwashing. And yes, we'll even be talking about edibles. And I'm still talking about packaging. So, I mean, fantastic stuff coming up all in all. The people behind this webinar is Business Finland, Finsk Norsk Kultur Institute, Embassy of Finland Oslo, Embalage Foreningen, and of course the Bioeconomy region. So that's a super combo if you ask me. Rest assured, you'll be in good hands. So prepare yourself for an hour of super information about packaging and bio stuff. But before we start, a word from the distinguished ambassador of Finland in Norway, the ever so diplomatic Mikael Antel. Mikael, take it away. Thank you, Kasper, for your very nice words. And uh, good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you. Nice to see you here. I would uh, start off by uh, thanking our uh, collaboration partners, uh, the Norwegian Finnish Cultural Institute, the Norwegian Embalage Foreningen, and of course the bioeconomy region. A warm thanks also to all our speakers and pitchers. Uh, Finland is known for forest, and the forest industry has been the backbone of Finnish economy now for quite a few years. But new disruptive innovations have been made in Finland the past year. Sustainable textiles, wood fibers, and other wood-based materials. Plastic does not have to be fossil. Anything you can make out of oil, you can make out of wood. You could say that biomaterials and other wood-based innovations could be the new Nokia for Finland. Consequently, many Finnish companies are aiming to conquer the bio-based product market at the moment. Norway, on the other hand, has a long coast where seaweed farming could make it possible to harvest materials for bioplastics. We should learn more about each other's strengths and try to capitalize on them through communication and partnerships. Together, the Nordic countries can deliver top-class innovations through cooperation. We need to facilitate the access to research and development for the benefit of the society as well as the business community. Today, we can learn more about what the market opportunities in Norway and Finland are, how we can work together for greener solutions. I hope this webinar will give food for thought and a real kickstart for future cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. And next one will be some interesting benchmarking. We will get some perspectives. We will get some perspectives from Finland and Norway, because with me here in the studio, I have two very distinctive gentlemen. We have um, Jürgen Ingeberg, 
uh, from Embalage Vereniging on Link. Hello, Jürgen. Hello. Nice to see you, Kasper. Thank you. You look radiant as well. And uh, we have uh, Antro Saila from the Finnish Packaging Association sitting next to me here. Welcome, Antro. Thank you, Kasper. And uh, great to see you again, Jürgen. Yeah. The same, Antro. Nice you, to see you. You guys are colleagues. We are kind of colleagues, yes. Yes. Would you, Antro, actually care to say a few words about yourself? Uh, introduce yourself to who you are. Uh, gladly, Kasper. Uh, yes, my name is Antro Saila. I'm coming from Finnish Packaging Association. In Finnish, it's uh, Suomen Pakkausyhdistys. Uh, and uh, that is my main job, but I have side jobs as well. I'm chairmaning the, the Finnish recycling, packaging, packaging recycling uh, company. Then I'm also uh, leading a group at the standardization organization in Finland. I'm chairing the Scandinavian Packaging Association, even though Finland is not part of Scandinavia. Uh, and uh, then, then uh, further on, I'm also president for European Packaging Institute's consortium and vice president for glo a global organization, World Packaging Organization. Fantastic. You sound like a really busy man. How about you, Jürgen? I am the cluster manager of Smart Pack 2030, uh, which soon will be circular packaging cluster. And I work basically every day to help about 40 to 45 com <clears throat> excuse me, 40 to 45 companies in Norway to uh, collaborate towards a more packaging, uh, more sustainable packaging future and to make uh, packaging uh, more circular. That's basically what I do. Uh, I also do other things in, in the, the packaging association, but uh, my main job is to manage the cluster. Fantastic. You gentlemen sound like titans of the Nordic packaging industry. Thank you. And, but you're here today to talk about benchmarking about possibilities and challenges in Finland and Norway. And I trust that you sit on a lot of information. But if I ask you this, what's your view on the demand to recycle and reuse packaging from the construction industry? How is it facilitated in Norway in Finland? Uh, Jorgen, if we start with you. Well, the construction industry is a very large user of packaging, as you may know, and the potential impact of recycling and reuse in the building se sector is quite substantial. And building projects also very often have the advantage of being centrally managed. So the possibilities for making closed loops should be very, quite good, actually. I believe one of the challenges uh, of the building industry uh, and what they're facing uh, though is the number of subcontractors used in any project making the task of management a very very difficult and, and, and a detailed one yeah how about you antro i hear they're building all these big shopping centers here in helsinki and my understanding is the recycling is not perfect these days well <coughs> you are absolutely right kasper and and i i have to say that i i very much agree what you what jürgen just said uh, the challenges are big and, and the, the thing that makes it a little bit complicated is, is the long chains with subcontractors. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, the central management that, that is leading these, these big projects is, is of course an, an asset that, that we could uh, rely more on. But overall, uh, both in, in European Union as well as in, in member states, as, as in countries like Norway, uh, reuse and recycling are, are the big things for the future. Yes. Would you say, Antro, there's a Nordic perspective to sustainable packaging? Absolutely. I, I think there is a, a Nordic perspective and, and it comes already from the fact that uh, uh, forest and, and forest industry is, is an important industry for Nordic countries. Uh, and the uh, forest industry has always been very good in, in recycling and in reusing. All so right. I, I think that we, we are naturally good in, the, in that area. Okay, Jorgen, what's your view on this? Well, actually, the, um, <clears throat> if there is a Nordic uh, perspective, the, answer, the short answer is yes. 
Um, I think all Nordic countries have visions and, and high consumer expectations uh, to make more sustainable packaging. And we go about it in, in our different ways. Uh, but we've, if we are able to pick the best solutions from each country, find common ground for developing best practice in recycling and waste management, we could probably be a showcase for uh, the rest of the world. Uh, Norway is not a part of uh, the European Union, as you may know, but uh, we have so far adopted most of the legislation and we share all common goals for recycling and waste management uh, with the, United, with the uh, uh, European Union. Um, and um, we also share a common history in Scandinavia and the Nordic countries as well. I may say, uh, Andrew, that most, most of... Uh, most people in the world do not know the difference between the Nordic and the Scandinavian countries anyway, so I, I think it doesn't really matter. <laughs> or if Norway uh, is in the European Union or not. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's right. That's true. We have the EES. Uh, yeah. So if we uh, share you know, this common history, and we also have a very good possibility of communication and networking through official and other channels like the packaging associations. Yes, that was actually my next question. Uh, what, uh, how is the cooperation between Finland and Norway? I know you guys are best buddies, but do you have enough contact? Uh, we, we do quite a lot of things together. We, we share information. We are, we are members in, in the same organizations. I, I mentioned uh, World Packaging Organization and European Packaging Institutes Consortium. Uh, and Scandinavian Packaging Association. And, and we, we have a, a, a very high number of projects we run together. And, and as, as, as you mentioned, we are good buddies between the Nordic countries' colleagues, and, and that makes things much easier. Yes. Uh, we touched on this subject already, but how about the forest as a resource? Jürgen? Uh, I, I know Antra has, has strong views on this, but Jorgen, how do you do you know what the forest is? Uh, well, uh, Norway doesn't have as much forest as, as uh, Finland, uh, but we do have quite a bit. There's actually a forest area that goes from from the eastern part of Norway all the way through uh, northern Sweden and and into Finland. And uh, basically, I, th I think. Um, from, from school, I learned that uh, Finland has about three-fourths uh, of, uh, of uh, the country covered by, by forest. And Sweden has about half, and Norway has about 25%. And we are still quite big countries in, in, in Europe. So we have a, a lot of, of possibilities based on that raw material. Um, I think in the short term, um, what we can do... <clears throat> uh, about uh, our forests is if you look at wood and fiber based packaging that can replace plastic uh, by moving to paper, cardboard or corrugated board where possible and feasible. I think that is probably where our resources uh, could be used. Uh, I also think that uh, um, we've had different ways of looking at the forest industry in our three countries, if, if I may include Sweden, because Sweden is, is, is a big part of this. Um, in Sweden and Finland, you have large forest industries. In Norway, we don't really have that. We um, uh, have some uh, industry, but basically in, in the 60s, we left the paper and pulp industry for other things maybe oil after you know and uh, in finland and, and also in sweden they've had uh, quite a big build up of, of forest industry which uh, uh, today is so you probably have a better platform or basis for development into that business than norway has uh, so we, we will probably have to make some 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 leaps uh, in in the forest industry to to uh, you know catch up with you if we ever can. That's very interesting, uh, Antro. <clears throat> I know you and I we both had to trek through a forest to actually get to the studio today. 
But does Finland actually utilize the vast resources enough that's out there? Well, that's that's a good question. Uh, we we do utilize our, our forest resources to to a very large extent, just like like Jürgen was was explaining. Uh, forest is a big industry in in Finland, one of the biggest. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have oil, uh, and so so we have to compensate it with with our green oil, which is which is the forest and the, and the wood raw material. Uh, and uh, if you think of, of packaging, uh, I, I think that more than 70% of, of the packaging uh, in, in Finland is, is made out of uh, forest resources. And, and that's quite a high share. And in that respect, I think that the world is going to change and become more like Finland than, than the other way around. I like the way you present that. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I'm also thinking there's a lot of research being done in both countries regarding biomaterials. Mm. But do you think there's a way we could, I mean, both Finland and Norway could actually make better use of each other's tests in some way? Uh, I'm talking about also small companies that could maybe access this data. Absolutely. Uh, I think that we, we do have some, some great examples, in, in, uh, not, not in the area of packaging, but in the area of resource utilization in, in other fields of activities. And, and one of the activities is something I was previously dealing with, and that's wood-based construction. Uh, we, we, we have had uh, Nordic cooperation and we have been exchanging uh, the, the researchers and, and we have had some projects uh, common between the Nordic countries and uh, that could be a benchmark we could utilize also for packaging industry. Packaging is, is something that, uh, because it's not a, a, a traditional uh, industry sector like, like forest industry or oil industry and that's why packaging is, is a little bit hidden uh, underneath and, and uh, that, is, that, that should be highlighted in, in the future and I think that, that the way Jürgen is, is for instance running his cluster in, in Norway is a good example and, and we have something a little bit similar also going on here in Finland. Exactly. Um, uh, I want to ask you Jürgen, we know biomaterials, it's a bit of a trend these days, but how do you look at, uh, at biomaterials in packaging? Um, well, we are also always looking for the, um, uh, you know, the answer to uh, what happens when the oil wells run dry. Actually, they don't have to run dry because the uh, demand for oil is probably going to decline anyway. So, uh, so um, I think that, that um, biomaterials have a potential of becoming very big business in, in uh, both our countries uh, and especially in the world. Um, and for Norway, the development of technology and sustainable bio-based packaging materials could be a major business. Although not as big as the oil industry, I think we need to uh, focus on, you know, or work with the development of several industries to make up for the loss of the oil revenue and as well as the jobs involved. There's about 250,000 people working in the oil industry today. Um, that will de decline and we need to get more jobs for these people and also for, for future generations. Um, and if we do that, that will give us a more diversified and less vulnerable income base as a, as, as a country. So I think that uh, bio-based uh, materials uh, and especially the the uh, uh, wood and the forest industry uh, uh, should be uh, uh, a very big part of that solution. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess you can already see some steps being taken in this direction. How is the biomarket in Norway these days? Uh, it's it's not uh, the biomarket, or let's say. Uh, paper, cardboard, and, and corrugated uh, are uh, running as fast as they can and they're developing as fast as they can, can because there is a surge for bio-based material. Sometimes uh, uh, I think that maybe we're doing that too fast. There are quite a few uh, problems also involved with changing from plastics and directly into, in, into fiber-based uh, materials. Uh, and I think we should be more, um, we, sh we, sh we should 
it should be more critical uh, when it comes to what we want to to use it for not just say okay it's paper it's good because that's not going to benefit the paper industry and that's not going to benefit the the uh, businesses using using the um, packaging so i i, th I think um, basically uh, uh, we are looking at possibilities in the big industries we have uh, norske skog that that you may know they, they have a, a large uh, facility making uh, uh, newspaper paper and they also have a large facility in, in Norway making making magazine paper. I think if you have people, you know, uh, companies like that, if they start looking at, which I, I think they are doing, uh, possibilities to make materials for packaging and more sustainable packaging, I think that will uh, impact the industry in Norway uh, tremendously because when large companies like that make investments, you will have the smaller that will follow. You have suppliers, you have, and the business community, and, and also um, all the environment around uh, utilizing wood as, as a material uh, will benefit from this. So I might be reading between the lines here, but are you saying uh, also that the fact that there still is some oil is maybe slowing down the process of going to other materials i i, th I think this is uh, this is uh, uh, parallel I, you i agree i agree i think this is parallel to uh, the use of, of plastics uh, in, in packaging there are a lot of areas where you could use other materials than plastics but it's too easy and too cheap to to use plastics and for Norwegian, the Norwegian government and for local governments as well, uh, we've had an abundance of, of, of money coming in from the oil, and uh, we, st we still do. And politicians have not been, for, for decades, not been, uh, you know, they haven't needed to, 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 to make um, decisions that are unpopular because they could just push some more money into the market and say, okay, we will s solve this because we have enough money. And now that's going to stop. And um, yes, so it's the same thing, you know, with, with plastics, it's too easy and too cheap to make uh, use of, of uh, virgin plastics. And it's too easy for our politicians to just to, to, to put some more money into, into uh, you know, d different holes where people are complaining. Right. Instead, of, instead of making compromises. So, Antro, we don't have this nasty problem of having too much oil in our country. <laughs> no, no, but we, we have plastics industry still. And uh, uh, so, something I, I would like to look like to emphasize a little bit is, is that uh, when we are talking about different materials, we shouldn't go, you know, hastily uh, using material in, in for an end use where it, it, it can serve better in, in, in something else. Uh, so there is a place for plastic, there is place for, for uh, other materials, there is also a place for, for wood-based fibers. And uh, I, I think uh, our, our raw material is, is so precious that we have to use it for the best possible end use. So let's, let's do the research, let's do the homework, and, and let's, let's really carefully select those areas where we want to use uh, our, our precious raw material. Fantastic. Uh, Jürgen, this is a question that interests a lot of our Finnish viewers. Say there was a Finnish company that was aiming to get into the Norwegian market. Do you have any tips or tricks? <laughs> I, I, I think uh, the, um, there's a universal uh, tip or trick, and that is to, to get to know the market. Fair it is a, uh, it's not a very big market. But it's a selective market, and it is a market that has uh, money to spend. And we we like good solutions, although they're not always the cheapest. Um, my assessment when it comes to companies would be converters and suppliers who specialize packaging and, and packaging techniques. Uh, if, if you want to, to uh, export or if you want to do business as a Finnish company in, in Norway. And I think also 
if you're looking at developments, the obvious markets could be the major industries like fish farming, for instance, which is very, very big, as you know. We, uh, we love Norwegian uh, salmon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would also believe that cooperation for innovation and joint ventures in, in this respect could be an area of considerable interest for both countries. So, you know, uh, as I said, the um, the market is not that big, so so you, you, you won't be able to sell as much as you, you would do to Germany, for instance, or France, obviously. But I think that um, the more high-end, high-level technologies and and uh, specialized packaging is, is that, that would that would be my bet. Thank you, uh, Antro. I have to ask you this question. Finland is always looking for the next Nokia, our famous mobile phone manufacturer from the 90s. But could biomaterials be it, the new Nokia? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm a great believer in, in, in bio industries and in anything that is renewable. Uh, overall, just like, like Jörgen was, was emphasizing the, the fact that fossil raw materials uh, will sooner or, or later run out or they, they become so expensive or then politically impossible to, to be used. And, and therefore, we have to learn to live again <coughs> based on renewable raw materials. And, and uh, well, that's, that's what we have. Our green gold is, is our next Nokia. I'm sure about that. Fantastic. I will quote you on that later. Um, finally, before we stop, is there anything you gentlemen would like to raise before we move on to the next segment? Uh, Jorgen, how about you? Uh, uh, I think uh, in addition to, to what Antro just said, I think that um, the big strength uh, lies in our communities. I think that Norway, uh, like Finland, uh, is a small and well-organized and transparent society, you know, where businesses are used to cooperate and trust one another. I think uh, that is one of the really big assets that we have. And I think that uh, if we can use that to develop the, uh, maybe not the next Nokia, but uh, still very high and highly sophisticated products in the packaging area, I think that that, that would uh, probably be a possibility. And a bilateral or multilateral uh, cooperation, if you if you include the Nordic other Nordic countries, I think uh, would be, would be a, a good idea. Fantastic. How about you, Antro? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I, I would uh, like to go go further from from what what Jorgen just said. Uh, I, th I think that uh, uh, all the meetings and, and uh, uh, all the occasions where we can exchange ideas between our our uh, Nordic colleagues are so fruitful. And, and fantastic uh, meetings always that uh, uh, if you think of the whole world, I, I think that the Nordic countries, all four of them, I would still, I, I would even add Denmark there, even if they don't have such uh, uh, natural resources as, as Norway, Sweden and, and, and Finland do have. But uh, I, I think we are so alike, finally. We are not Germans, we are not French, we are not English or Americans or Chinese. So uh, our strength is the cooperation. So let's foster the cooperation between our Nordic countries because we are the ones that are so alike that uh, it is easy for us to cooperate. Fantastic. There's a lot of love in the studio today. Very good perspectives, both of you. Jorgen Ingeberg talking from Embalageföreningen in Norway, Antrosaila the Finnish Packaging Association. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now finally, we get to the nitty gritty of it. It's panel time. And with me, I have two distinguished gentlemen and one distinguished lady. Uh, on link, Saila Kettunen uh, of Kotka Mills from Finland. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well, thank you. I, I can hear you, and I really like that you choose to join us from New York, uh, <laughs> according to, to your backdrop. It's, I like that. It is, it is very nice to, you can pretend to be wherever you want. 
Yeah, I mean, no, crazy, right? This is, it's the 90s, it's crazy. <laughs> but you're Vice President for Sustainability and Communications uh, at Kotka Mills. Is there anything else we should know about you? Well, I think that uh, from my personality, I'm very enthusiastic about uh, sustainability, responsibility, and also sport. Right. So if they can be a uh, kind of parallel, that is me. That's a super combo. I like that. And you're here to chat from a producer perspective, which I like. Then we have from a design perspective. Markus Joutsela, lecturer and design researcher at Finnish Aalto University. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything we should know about you before we start? I have a special relationship with packaging and I, I think about it from so many different perspectives. So I, I, I just find it fascinating to work with packaging design challenges. And you live and breathe packaging? I would say so, yes. Lovely to have you here. Absolutely the right person. And then on link from Norway, we also have Rolf Eriksen, leader environment at Wien Monopolet. Can you hear me, Rolf? I can hear you perfectly well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And I love that Sila is in New York and you choose to join us from a sunflower field. No, that's not a sunflower field, of course. It's a wine field. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Of and, course. And, um, you're here to talk about stuff from the user perspective. Yeah, I am. Uh, anything we should know about you in particular before we start? Well, I'm the guy that uh, brings up a lot of extra work uh, in a company uh, regarding sustainability and uh, enthusiastically implement uh, it in the value chain. Those are my favorite things, personally, so glad to have you here. Okay, I feel like I want to just throw the first question up in the air. Plastic or no plastic? Who's against and who's for plastic? Marcus? I would say plastic has its place. I, I would say there are products where it's really difficult to live without it, but I think that we can do a lot with uh, maybe replacing fossil-based plastics right. and finding alternative solutions. Okay. Rolf, pro or con? Pro. Definitely pro. As for now, I'm pro. Um, but it depends. And now the, the, the boring part starts. Uh, <laughs> Plastic is uh, fantastic, but it depends on the, the recyclability and it depends on where it ends up. Uh, but the alternative for, for instance, as Vin Monopula, it's a great alternative to the heavy glass bottles that we have. I see. I mean, that, that's something that's widely discussed. And I remember from my childhood when you brought uh, bought a soda, glass bottle, it's like... 10 kilos just to drink a liter of coke or whatever. But I guess the question as Marcus here uh, wanted to address was the way you make this plastic. Yes, there's, there's a lot of uh, plastic that can be also bio-based, uh, sourced from, from uh, natural materials, uh, cellulose, starch, corn, whatever you know and uh, um, those can be can be also used in the in pretty much the same way as, as fossil based plastics and and then we also have those biodegradable plastics so so there are there are some some variations that you can you can use and, and select from when you select uh, plastics for products so so basically you have the Degradable and non-degradable, and then you have the bio-based and non-bio-based plastics. And, and um, I think the tendency is to is to uh, go towards plastic recovery. So the source is one thing, but also that how how can you uh, recover the plastic and reuse it is another question that we need to consider. Can we actually get a producer perspective on this from Saila Kettunen? 
uh, I, I want someone to explain this to me like I'm a five-year-old. Because I hear these terms thrown around, there's bio this and bio that. How does this actually go, Saila? Um, let's say that um, as, as it was told from, uh, from other, other colleagues, uh, they said that there are a lot of different types of plastics like bi bio, bio plastic and biodegradable plastic. And, and let's say so that bioplastic uh, made from plant-based materials, but still being the same chemistry as the oil-based plastic has the same issue in uh, plastic waste dilemma than the normal oil-based materials. So basically, whether you do the plastic from plant or oil, when it's having the same chemistry, the end-of-life behavior is similar. But on the other hand, when, when we think about end-of-life behavior of biodegradable plastics, it is then a totally different story, and and this uh, collection and recycling uh, of these materials differ significantly from from the from the let's say oil-based plastics or or plastic with uh, similar chemistry than the traditional plastics have. So this was not for five years old, maybe, but 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 let's say straightforward. You can make the similar chemistry from different materials, which has the same uh, properties uh, after it's in, in use and after it's used. And then you may have uh, bio-based materials, which are biodegradable as well, and then they have different uh, end-of-life options. I want to circle back a little bit here, because after all, the name of this webinar is is wood the new plastic? So, Sila, is wood the new plastic? I actually would rather say that wood has its own character and it should be evaluated by its own properties. And, and if you think about uh, plastic, it, it has a certain, let's say, Play, place and it has certain properties, which many of the alternative products are trying to kind of escape from. And that's why, even though I think that you mean that whether whether wood can replace the plastic and not, not named as plastic, I would still avoid saying that. And if you think about the wood as the solution from uh, renewable sources, uh, recyclable products, even biodegradable if, uh, if uh, not disposed in a proper way. And, and then growing up as a new tree, I would say that it does not need to be named as plastic. It's good. Yes, yes, obvi obviously. <laughs> but uh, let me rephrase that. Are biomaterials the future? Biomaterials? Yes, I am understood clearly that you mentioned that, but we should not kind of reflect that too, too much. Biomaterials like wood fibers are one of the biomaterials, but how much plastic types of products we will then make out of it. Uh, definitely there will be a way for bioplastics to grow, but uh, we should not go to the direction that we are still having the same waste problem that we, we have. So we need to address the, the ways for avoiding the, the waste issue, which we globally have. Right. I know I'm clearly I'm trying to simplify, oversimplify something that's very complicated, but I'm still going to throw the same question to you, Marcus. Is wood the new plastic? Fiber-based materials are cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the kind of answer <laughs> I like. <laughs> but I won't say that plastic doesn't have its place. <laughs> no, okay. So that's a bit that's boring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> but uh, how about if I use the word biomaterials? Yes, I think we will see an increase in those materials. There are lots of uh, new 
interesting materials being developed, uh, lots of new companies working with, with combinations of materials, uh, new types of uh, bio-based polymers um, that can be used in many, many products that have been considered difficult before. Um, we have companies such as Sulapak or uh, Paptic or, or Woodley working with, with um, plastics that are bio-based uh, and, and can be used in, in for instance, food, food products. And, and uh, Kotka Mills is working with, with very interesting solutions as well. So we have quite a lot of uh, national development going on as well in these materials with, with up-and-coming startups, established companies, and, and then research projects as well. So quite a lot of interesting things going on, I would say. Rolf, I, I want to throw this to you, because Marcus mentioned companies dabbling in biomaterials. How's Wien Monopolet doing these days? Are you uh, looking into this? We are looking into this in, uh, in many different aspects. I think that uh, if, if you rephrase the question to me, if, uh, if uh, wood is the new plastic, I would say biomaterial is the new, uh, is the new way of going. But I would like to see the the combination of recycled material and then um, and then adding the the biomaterial in addition to that. So you can get rid of uh, the oil based uh, material all in all. So that's our overall goal to get rid of uh, the oil based uh, materials as soon as possible. Do you have an? actual example of something that Wien Monopoly is doing at the moment that would uh, describe this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Can we hear it? <laughs> show it to you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to show it to me? I mean... Yeah, 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 I can pick it up. It takes like 15 seconds. Fantastic. Let's... Okay. We're we'll back. Yeah. I guess you haven't seen this before. I definitely have not. What is this craziness? This is a paper wine bottle. Get out of here! Get out yeah. of here! It has a big hole in it. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's a instead of a bag and box, it's a bag and bottle. Okay. Um, so it's uh, a lot of fiber instead of uh, the plastic around it, and then uh, inside there's this this little bag of plastic now. Um, but this is a new invention that uh, came up in the market, and now be, it's available in our stores. From November. Really? Oh, that's wow. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so we don't know yet how the public will sort of buy it or anything, but you, you've probably done some research, uh, test groups. Actually not. No? Not at okay. all. This is just uh, put out there and uh, let the numbers, sales numbers speak for itself. I like it immediately. I want to be the little cardboard ship that goes into the cardboard bottle. Although you can't see it, which, <laughs> yeah. is, which is boring. <laughs> Can I also ask Saila, what's your immediate reaction to the bag in the bottle box? But I have seen it before in different end use applications. Uh, basically, I would say that uh, if you think about the our product, we have a little bit different, different, um, uh, let's say, way to solve the problem. So that we we have a kind of mono material which will be totally recycled as such, and and this kind of um, uh, combined materials you need to you need to still uh, separate before you you can you can uh, recycle them in a in a right recycling stream. But uh, of course, I'm in favor of uh, fiber-based solutions anyhow. So this is one step, and and then then there certainly, most likely, will be steps towards, for example, uh, products like ours. Yeah, because I immediately I want to make a piñata out of this and then <laughs> hit it and get sprayed with wine. It's going to be fantastic. But you're saying, Saila, you're more or less going for the 100% recyclable stuff. Uh, we are there actually already. So all the materials which we produce, they are they are uh, recyclable, and and actually they are also biodegradable. So, but but you, it's not the harming the recycling system at all. So it's it's not like uh, a bioplastic which would uh, 
would degrade, like uh, earlier mentioned. What kind of products are these? So, so we produce um, normal holding of sport cartons, but also uh, barrier boards, where water-based dispersion barriers are are in the in the fiber structure, and they prevent then the moisture and and, and that, uh, uh, penetration through the cart garden board. Mm -hmm. So online produced uh, boards, which are then uh, used as such for making uh, holding box board types or food service types of products at the moment. But I can also at the same time say that uh, we have a quite nice development portfolio where also kind of future packaging solutions might be of interest. I still want to throw out the big one. What's the future of packaging? And we could start with Sila. I think that the future for packaging, and especially for fiber-based packaging, is good. And definitely, I'm sure that fiber-based packaging will will uh, grow and replace currently some uh, plastic plastic end uses and 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 end use areas. There will be um, further development of of new solutions wood fiber-based solutions, whether they are then uh, totally with uh, new additional bio-based uh, know-how, mo most likely in some years. But still, I would say that uh, a lot based on, uh, on the current fiber-based packaging type. And, and Kotka, as we have had uh, in Kotka we we have been producing for Four years, so we have brand new machines. So we are still there in our development uh, uh, curve in the say. So we have the first uh, materials and end uses already covered, and and there will be a lot to come. Marcus, what say you? What is the future of packaging? I say circular design. Wow. Circular design, meaning that, that it's not only material-based uh, on, on particular fiber-based materials, although these examples that are from, from projects that we have been working on, those, those are actually all fiber-based, and they have quite unique materials from, from uh, aerogels to, to, um, to folded structures or, or uh, multi-layered but fiber-based materials. But anyhow, circular design. So even more clever traditional plastic packaging that can be circulated in a better systems, in a better way, uh, with less stress for the consumers or the systems. I think that's the way to go. Rolf, uh, do these people know what they're talking about? <laughs> yeah, it seems, it seems so. <laughs> um, for us, it's, uh, it's uh, lighter weight packaging designed to be recycled. It contains re recycled materials in combination with uh, biomaterials. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what we are going for. That sounds very smart. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, Saila Kettunen, Rolf Eriksen, Markus Joutsela, that you could make it here. I know, I know a lot more about the future than I did 15 minutes ago. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff, good stuff. And now for my favorite part of this morning, the pitching rounds. We have three innovative companies from Finland and three equally innovative companies from Norway competing about who's the master pitcher of this morning. In the Finnish corner, we have Jaakko Kaminen, CEO of Woodley. We have Laura Tirkkonen Rajasalo, R&D director and co-founder of Sulapak. And, of course, Tuomas Mustonen, CEO and co-founder at Paptic. In the Norwegian corner, we have Adriana Kuvik, material scientist at BZOs. We have Christine Falkland martinsen key account manager at Molza Packaging. And, of course, Paul Folkestad of Norwegian Fashion Hub slash Retail Production. You can think of this as a sort of Maa Ottelu slash Landskamp, if you will, 
But I, of course, don't see it as that. I see the real winner will be the consumer and nature, of course. But without further ado, do what you do best. Pitch away. Plastic is everywhere because it just might be the greatest material ever invented. It is light, it is durable, transparent when needed, and it can take many forms. Plastic is completely integrated with the lives that we live and with everything that we consume. It is in the products that we use, in the packaging of those products. We use it for textiles, for housing, for transportation. We use plastic simply because the life as we know it wouldn't be possible without it. So what is the problem? The use of plastics have come with the significant environmental drawbacks. There is dependency on fossil feedstock, carbon emissions and the issue of littering. These problems are real and they need to be addressed. This is the reason why many people propose we should abandon or replace plastics altogether. But the fact is that it is too late to turn back. Despite of the global backlash against plastics, the demand is still expected to at least double by the year 2050, possibly even triple according to some estimations. So if we cannot abandon or we cannot replace plastics, what can we do? We can redesign plastics. It means that instead of oil, we use renewable resources like wood to create an entirely new type of plastic. And that is exactly what we have done with Woodley. Woodley is carbon neutral, transparent, an entirely new type of plastic that is designed to be recyclable. The backbone of Woodley is cellulose, sourced from sustainably managed forests. In addition, we have designed Woodley to be compatible with existing manufacturing technology. That means that we don't need to build plants and production lines all over the world to scale up and go big. Instead, we have partnered with plastic industry that already has a global infra and 100 years worth of experience. So what can Woodley be used for? Well, since Woodley is plastic, it has the potential of plastics. So that it could be used for products and packaging, textiles, housing, transportation. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Currently, we are commercializing the first Woodley packaging applications that can be used to back goods like electronics, textiles, cosmetics, and food. My name is Jakko Kaminen, and I'm the CEO of Woodley. Want to know more about us and follow our journey? Check out woodley.com. Bezels, I started dedicating to developing seaweed-based packaging. We're all aware about the plastic problem. 275 millions of tons of plastic are generated every year. Half of it comes from packaging, and actually very little is recycled. In response to this, there has been an increased consumer concern, also looking for new alternatives. However, these come with some drawbacks. In Bezels, we believe that seaweed can provide a better solution. Since it grows very fast, it's carbon sequestering, and it does not compete with land use. Seaweed is also a source of biopolymers. These seaweed extracts, when mixed with plasticizers and fillers, can be shaped into different types of packaging. So our innovation lies within material formulation, which can be converted into tailored packaging solutions. So our first project was a drinking straw, and our latest project has been the development of a flexible film. We have developed a material formulation which is patentable. It's also bio-based and home compostable, and we're using sustainably sourced raw materials. In this way, we're contributing to a circular economy. The market of single-use plastic is quite big, and we plan to take a part of it. We forecast to match one of the brand needs of our customer Nestle by 2024, and we're looking for opportunities in other sectors as well. In regard to the business model, we believe in a conservative model in which revenue will come from three different streams, consultancy services, manufacturing and trials, 
and licensing of our technology to other plastic suppliers. In regard to climate impact, with our material, we estimate that 1.5 million tons of CO2 would be spared from being emitted yearly, in addition to the plastic waste reduction. We're looking for funding to produce at pilot scale, which will lead to a shop list with Nestle. We have been able to secure 350,000 euros and we're looking actively for new investors. All this is possible thanks to the Bezels team, which is a multidisciplinary, engaged and international team. We have expertise in material science and business. We believe that sustainable packaging is a responsibility and a need for everyone. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Laura Tirkonen Rajasalo. I'm the co-founder and R&D director of Sulapak. The plastic waste problem is one of the most pressing environmental issues of our time. A truck full of plastic waste ends up in our oceans every minute. The consequences for marine life are devastating. But the visible litter is not the only problem. Plastic breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces, finally becoming microplastics, which has severe impacts on ecosystems and also human health. The fact is that we can't recycle our way, way out of the crisis. Radically changing our lifestyles and consumption habits takes a long time. What we need now is a new wave of sustainable solutions today. To accelerate the plastic waste-free future, Sulapak has developed a sustainable yet practical alternative to conventional plastics. Sulapak materials are designed like nature, being bio-based and organically recyclable, they mimic nature in circularity. If Sulapak materials accidentally end up in nature, they biodegrade like a tree leaf or a piece of natural wood. What stays behind is only CO2, water and biomass. No microplastics or toxic chemicals. Just like nature, Sulapak never compromises on functionality or aesthetics. The material also works with the existing plastic product machinery, so no need to build new production lines. That makes Sulabak material a commercially feasible option. A variety of products can be made from Sulabak materials, from luxury packaging and clothing hangers to cutlery and hygiene products. We want to make Sulabak the new standard in sustainable materials replacing plastic. No one can save the world from plastic waste alone, but together we can make it. Join the forerunners at sulabak.com. Thank you. Hello, my name is Paul von Gustav, the general manager of Retail Production. Retail Production is a company located in Oslo and deliver goods, branded goods and converted products to the retail business in Norway. We have for the past six years been sustainable advisors in our field. And for that reason, we were asked by the Norwegian Fashion Hub two years ago, that is a cluster for the Norwegian textile companies to participate as a project leader for a pro study financed by the Innovation Norway named Sustainable Packaging in the Textile Industry. Our main advice in a sustainable perspective was to use recycled qualities in their packaging program. Our advice seems fine for paper and paper board, but not for plastic. The lack of clean fraction in production gives smell that can't be combined with textiles. Bioplastic first generation is not even recommendable concerning lack of environmental documentation and expect concerning food production. The report ended with 
is wood, the new plastic. Together with Norwegian fashion and textile agenda that obtain both Norwegian and international textile brands, we want to investigate and make research of the possibility to make e-commerce pay from wood as a resource. Our study in place full commitment from the members and we want to lift the production. We will deliver business plan, SWOT, production, know-how, studies, innovation thinking, maybe as well we are going to find investors. The question is, are there anyone that can help us to produce the raw material? We believe that wood-based sugar to plastic is the key words because the product is recyclable, which we believe will be the big demand for the future. Thank you. My name is Christine and I'm working at Molse Packaging in Norway. Growing up, I spent many hours in my father's factory, studying the production line and understanding how each machine played an important role in turning cardboard into packaging. I thought everyone knew that uh, this uh, material came from the Swedish woods, that it was as valuable as gold and so clean that you could eat it. Actually, I did that one time because a customer did not believe me. As I grew older, I studied marketing because the consumer behavior was of great interest to me. Combining this study with my passion for packaging could help me one day make my own brand. Flowerline was my dream come true. The flower industry contains, in my opinion, of more plastic items than necessary. I have been studying this market for several year, years because I knew carbon black plastic pots would cause problems in the future and also because some fiber-based pots were introduced to the market without great success. Our company, Molse Packaging, has been developing carton, carton board solution and replacing plastic packaging for different customers in Europe. The fruit and vegetable market is one of them. This process proved that watch and fiber carton board produced in the right construction could resist moisture even without a barrier in some cases. And the production line could be cost effective and reduce carbon footprint because of better logistic and transportation possibilities. My experience, know-how and my love for flowers were my tools to develop the different flower pots. All types are produced in virgin fiber the largest uh, pots can even be composted with the plant. The herb pot has a barrier of pea inside. The pea is less than 10% of the total weight. So uh, it could easily be recycled uh, with a cardboard. board. The pots have four corners instead of a round shape. So it will fit standard machines and can still be used in existing filling magazines at the plantations. Flowerline have trendy designs fitted for northern homes, but of course they can also be customized. For the types with a hole for root system, I added a foot. This will keep the pot dry when watering inside. The foot has quotes like uh, fabulous you, Carpe diem, and thank you, which appeals to the gift market in flower stores. Obviously, I could talk about Flower 9 for hours. Instead, I invite you to visit our website, flowerline.no. Thank you. Hi, I'm Donald Mustonen. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Paptic. What is Paptic, you may ask? Well, it's this. A new, innovative, super strong and sustainable material for flexible packaging applications replacing plastics. 
the adapt silence. Plastics accumulation is a massive problem for this planet as they produce 300 million tons of plastics per year and only 10% is being recycled. And we eat them too. According to WWF, approximately this much every week. We want to stop feeding plastics to consumers and we know you want it too. So what can you do about it? You can go for bioplastics, but they are all confusing. Some are bio-based, some biodegradable, some recyclable, but none of them are all three at the same time. Plastic is. You can try recycled plastics, but I don't think the whale drowning in plastic bag really gives a shit whether the bag is made of recycled plastics or not. You can try paper, but it's heavy, but still breaks easily. Hear that? Noise. You could try e-commerce boxes, but then you'll be shipping air to your customers. Why not do a stock Monday? And replace the plastic with plastic in your e-commerce majors. Now, the Stockman Fulfillment Center employees are more efficient and so are their customers more happy. Or you could do what Sokos did, switching to reusable plastic bags. They are now selling 70% less single-use bags and according to a study done at Sokos, 96% of consumers are now perceiving the Sokos brand more positively. Or you could do what the moment characters did, to design a reusable gift bag for your most iconic product. Or you could replace the poly bags with something more sustainable and clever. Or you could do cosmetic bags. Or you could do shoe bags. Or you could do dust bags. Or you could do garment bags. You name it. We often hear that it's hard and expensive to move to sustainable materials. With plastic, it's not. A candy bag made of plastic is only half a cent more expensive. Plastic is sold in reels and delivered to your current packaging suppliers who can use their existing machinery. Since 2018, we have already sold plastic to over 30 countries. I think I forgot something. Oh yeah, plastic is super sustainable. It's made from sustainably sourced, FSC certified cellulose fibers, it is up to 50% lighter than paper, it is strong and flexible like textiles, and it's recyclable and biodegradable. Let's turn your packaging into something new. Hear that? Sounds like the future. So that was all we have for this morning, but I want to take this opportunity to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for attending. I think we all learned a lot today. I know this guy did, but that's just me. Also, if you didn't catch every second of what was said this morning, don't worry. This will be made available to watch later, which is great, because then you can just watch me over and over again in slow motion, if you will, and that will also be helpful, at least for myself. Also, if you like what you saw on the pitching rounds there a while back, don't hesitate to contact these guys. I know I loved every second, and if I was an investor, I'd just be pouring money over these guys. But then again, I'm not, so I'll leave it to you. You do what you do best. On behalf of the Embassy of Finland in Norway, Business Finland, the Finnish-Norwegian Cultural Institute, Embalageföreningen, and the Bioeconomy Region, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for coming. The future looks fantastic. Embrace it. I love you all. Thanks. Bye.